Hey guys, Harry here. I'm just doing a little bit of a video. Um, the start of the next Brit Lane vlog, so it's, um, it's technically Monday, but it's half one in the morning. Um, I've not been to bed yet, but I had a few things to do and I was just chilling out, so I get a lot of my chill time after midnight because, um, yeah, obviously, younger now, I don't get to sleep most nights till 10, 11 o'clock. Don't have much time for editing or much time to do out for myself. In between work, so uh, I just thought I'd show you what I edit all my videos on. Uh, it's me, it's me, uh, my phone, my smartphone, Poco X3 by Xiaomi. Uh, Chinese, mate, like, but they're about 250 quid, these smartphones. Um, and you know, they do perform just as well as a Samsung Galaxy or a, or a uh, iPhone. And because for 250 quid, I lost my phone last year. Um, January of yeah uh, December December of last year just before maybe maybe September of last year I lost my iPhone I've been using all the iPhones that Mrs had ever since and I just got one of these two hundred and fifty quid I saves you know I'm like paying for phone contract sixty pound a month you know get one of them for two fifty bang it on Klarna if you can't pay it all in a one and you've got a phone that will uh, you know phone that's a fraction of the price but performs miles better. I do all my editing on it. I've got a um I'll toss a little picture up of my gaming setup I've got for this. It's got a Snapdragon chip in it for gaming. Because at the moment I haven't been able to get on my PlayStation 5. Um we've got two PlayStations, one downstairs, one upstairs, two PS5s, but I don't have time to get on it so I just have all my get having have some games on my phone. I've got a controller and I've got a back rear mounted fan that I use as well. Not just for gaming, but for editing, because it gets quite hot, this phone. Uh, so it's it's bang on. The camera on it, it's got a uh, three, four lens, three lens system. Camera's bang on for doing vlogs at work when I ain't got this GoPro. Uh, the audio is fantastic. The picture quality is fantastic. Um, and this is my GoPro box. Obviously, I'm filming on the GoPro now. This is my GoPro box. And what's in the GoPro box? I've got a little, little slot for his Mia Casso. Um, me all the me all the Casso camera. That's basically all my footage that you've seen. You've seen up until this point. It's been on this Casso with me pair of batteries, and I'm gonna get obviously a pair of uh, another pair of uh, GoPro batteries to go with this a GoPro Hero Eight. But yeah, finally after you know a year and a half on YouTube, um, got a, got round to getting a, a performance uh, performance on a quality upgrade for the videos. Um, Little pair of Sony earphones. I, I like to wear. You see me wearing these at work sometimes when I'm solo. I've got to take some phone calls, but I'm going to get a wireless pair. They do a wireless pair. These are about 15, 20 quid. You get a wireless pair for 35 now. These Sony headphones, they do like come in grey, black, and white, I think, but they're bang on. And uh, I love them for work as well. They're good. Um, uh, but yeah, that's sort of the reason I get to work after eight, you know, half eight ish, quarter to nine. I just prefer those hours, you know, they suit me. The latest, you know, a little bit of a lying, a bit of a later start. Um, you know, obviously it penalises a bit in in, uh, in winter because we have to finish it half, uh, four, half, four, the latest. So we're not sort of getting as many hours in in, uh, in the winter months, but that's only two or three months of the year and then the rest of the year. You know the uh, the other uh, eight month of the year, nine month of the year, uh, we, you know we're working till five, six o'clock ish. So it uh, it works better for me, obviously with you know circumstance I'm in with uh, with my with my lad and the way I like to do it. It's, you know some people are morning people. I've never been a morning person. Um, they called me after eight years ago as an apprentice, but I was never I've never been a morning person. I've never liked I felt or I felt I feel lethargic in the morning, I feel crap and that and I need my sleep and uh I just prefer to not rush as well. That's another thing. <coughs> Some of the guys, um I've got questions from a few younger lads. Um, even though I'm young myself, I'm I'll be I'm only be I'll only be twenty seven next month. Um but you know, I've had lads who are just at the time maybe in the in, in twenty two, twenty three, and you know you won't you know you won't believe how many people say why do you you know why do you work so late or why do you work these hours, and um, 
and I don't know if I want to go on price, etc. And it's just about finding something that works for you that's repeatable. Like for me, I've found a good system that works for me. Get into site half eight, maybe quarter past if the site's close enough. Not you know, not getting out of bed silly o'clock in the morning, not rushing. You know, being in a nice flow all day, and you can see how much I get done. I get so much done being relaxed, being uh, working to my own terms, working on my own time scale, being stress free. I just absolutely churn work out, just relaxed in a relaxed pace. When you're relaxed, you hit something called flow state. Get into a flow state when you're working where everything clicks, everything's going down nice and easy. And uh, I think it's undersold. People try and live to a a uh, you know a cookie cutter. You know, cook a quarter time scale. You got to get there at seven. Uh, you got to get there at seven. Set your profiles up. You got to get your gobble at eight. You got to work well before four o'clock. Um, you have a you know, half an hour snap here, half an hour snap there. You know, if you're working well five, or you're working well six, or you're working well seven, or if you're working well eight, you something's going wrong. And at the end of the day, you got to work to your own time. You know what I mean? You work your own hours. You want to work. I work nine hour days sometimes, ten hour days. Sometimes I work six hours, sometimes I work seven. You've got to work whatever suits you in your circumstance. And that's so I want to put out to the, you know, not just the younger guys on YouTube, but maybe guys middle-aged. Maybe they fucking think, rethink the way they want to do things. You know, I know my mate, uh, one of my one of your good mates, um, he, after, after seeing what I did um, and having a chat, and and doing the after eight stuff, he realised that fucking hell, you know, it, you know, he'd been doing it, he'd been, you know, sort of taking that sort of approach for years, and it'd been working great for him. And there's more than there's more people than you think who would get to work a bit later, work a bit later, you know, work to their own time scale. Uh, it works for some, it doesn't work for others, but yeah, just something to spread uh, spread the knowledge out there for everyone, uh, and just to give you guys a. Uh, there's more than one way to go about this, you know, there's more, more than one way to go about price work, bricklaying, you know, on housing, on housing sites, you know, there's more than one way to skin a cat in a sense, but yeah. Anyway, I'm going to get a, uh, I'm going to get a nightcap and uh, I'll see you guys in the morning and uh, I'll probably not get any footage tomorrow, I'll get a bit on the phone, um, but we're off on some double garages and another job, clay bricks. About using the seven inch. Well, I'm always using the seven inch tile setter now. Pick and dip one at a time. Uh, get some good footage for you guys because um, some I'm still mastering. I've pretty much um, mastered the the connies, the connies on uh, with the tile setter, but the clay bricks because I've not been laying as many of them because there isn't as many whereabouts where I'm uh, working. It's nice to get on the clay bricks for a bit of a uh, bit of change of pace. So, right, guys, I'll uh, sorry for this big long intro, but I'll see you in the next clip. So it's uh, Monday, and uh, I didn't get much sleep last night. But hi ho, we're here, just on these two tables, just finishing off the course. It's quarter to four. I'm a bit I didn't really get started till ten. Just messing about and waiting for the table lifts, but yeah. Right, so. Fast forward, you know, a couple hours from last clip, it's now six. It took us a bit longer to get that done, we run out of cuts and whatnot, but fucking is what it is, we didn't have a bad day in the end, you know, ten well six. You know, uh check it, there we go. We had, you know, pretty much a day work day today, but we had we did that table lift and all the cuts so that on my side and then we did the other table lift. It done some of the cuts but um, yeah, a bit of a shit day, you know, you can't always have the cream, but we're off to another job tomorrow, hopefully I'm a double garage. Uh, if not, you know, we'll see tomorrow. Alright, in a bizzles. So it's uh, it's Tuesday, we're on another job now. Nice little timber frame job, uh, doing this double garage with a, with a block skin. Um, got here a little bit late, maybe nine, not really late really, but uh, yeah, that's what we got done so far, we've laid 350 brick, something like that maybe. Yeah, check it out. Um, yeah, a little two doorways each side. I should have put that, set that door out, but I just couldn't be bothered. Ain't any door frames. So, um, Dean's just gone to get a, got another full tub there, sat there. Gobbo's lovely. Brick combo, lovely and all. Um, yeah, Dean's just gone to get me some snap, because I don't know what time this job's open till, and because we've been staying well five, I'm going to work through my snap, then uh, use that up, get off in good time, so they don't lock us in. Uh, 
some sites are funny about it, but yeah, I'll wait for my snap. It's warm today and I just want to get it done. New Dewalt speaker, top kit. Okay, right, uh, still use it towel setter. Just got a few extra trowels for scraping off. Alright, see you in a bit. So it's uh, 20 to 4, and this is what we got done. Well, that's obviously inside, which, which is getting uh, block work up it. But yeah, check it out. All this up, that's up. 9, 12, 13, 14 course. That's up. 7 course. Ah, yes, 21. And I'll have a quick count up for you guys. So, yeah, that's 965 brick uh, from 10. Well, 342. So, Dean's almost jointed that. I'm going to join this, wash silo out and clean tools off, so it's 10 well 4 there, almost basically a thousand bricks, 9.65, so yeah, so people saying that I just work late, I'm not always working late, with that as well, I didn't get any footage today, but I will tomorrow, I promise, get some footage doing outside, oh yeah, see you in a bit. Hey guys, Harry here, back with another Brit Lane vlog. It's the voiceover time of the video. I haven't done one of these in a good couple of weeks. I've just been doing time lapses and head cam, uh, live voiceovers. But because <coughs> I didn't manage to get any head cam today because we had a bit of a late start and it was pretty hot. And the first day on a new job, I just like to just get stuck in and and uh, you know get to grips with the uh, site. You know, I'm only there for a week. Uh, well, four days as it is, I've had a little calculate of how much gear's left to lay on that double garage, and it should easily get us to Friday, um, a few good days up until Friday, we're actually, I didn't mention it in the video, but uh, that site closes at quarter past four, the, you know, the, the manager locks the gates at quarter past four, so we've got to be off there by, you know, five past ten past four, um, so there's no late days there, so I've... The site's a good 20 minutes closer to uh, my house compared to the other one that's like, um, that's 30 minutes from my house and the other one's like 50. So we're going to set off at 7 instead of half 7 uh, and get there, you know, obviously by 8 o'clock I think we can get us, I think we can get us gobble at 8 when the fork truck starts. Uh, so, you know, we'll be there probably around half 7 because every morning, uh, I don't know, I think I've ever said this in a video but every morning we stop for a coffee at mcdonald's um i don't always have a coffee sometimes i have a hot chocolate or a diet coke but always have a little morning routine you know that's another thing about you know um being on price being self-employed do what you fucking want you know what i mean you know, sometimes i have it if i'm hanging i've had a few beers the night before uh which isn't too in too regular i don't normally drink on a school night uh, but it's, if I've been out, if I'm with you on, uh, on Sunday or I've been out drinking, I'll definitely need a McDonald's breakfast on a Monday, you know, some pancakes or a McMuffin or something like that. And, um, you know, do what you want. This is the thing. This is the beginning of the video, at the beginning of the video, my little vlog. You know, I'm, I sort of try to emphasize guys who are on price, you know, you, you don't need to take things that serious. You don't have to take things that extreme. Just focus on... Focus on, you know, being efficient when you're working and, you know, get plenty done. That's why you can see me using the little trowel today in this footage. And I've been using it, you know, no matter what I'm doing. Block work, brick work, clay bricks, concrete bricks. This trowel in particular excels at concrete because the concrete bricks don't have any perforations or any real frog to, uh, to fill. As you can see, these small little holes in the concrete bricks, they're tiny. You know, there's not much um area or any sort of much opening for the gobbo to go down so <coughs> you don't have to use as much gobbo but for the clay bricks um sometimes you can find it's a little bit small if the mortar isn't perfect or you sometimes have to make sure you fill it every time with a seven inch so it gets me on to my next point <coughs> in the Next few days, I'm going to be creating um, probably one of the most optimal pick and dip trowels you can more or less use. Bit of a disclaimer, I didn't come up with it. Um, Charlie Collison made this trowel quite a, couple, a good couple of years ago now. And you'll have seen him using it in one of his videos. If I can remember when I make the actual video, I'll show 
uh, I'll show some footage of him actually using this one just to give a bit of credit where credit's due because he's a pioneer of, of this pick and dip game on YouTube and he's, you know, he's indirectly allowed hundreds if not thousands of bricklayers to lay more bricks. So, you know, this is what I'm going to do. Um, obviously, he's not made very many videos in the last few weeks, but it's something I want to emphasize with, you know, I want to sort of... Uh, go into a bit of detail with this pick and dip and what I found using a small trowel has increased. My <coughs> average number of bricks I'm putting down per day has gone up by at least one to 200 by just using a small trowel for the pure reason of arm fatigue. Arm fatigue and uh, with the small trowel you can keep your hand speed up for longer. You feel less tired through the day which is for most of us who aren't super fit, you know, I'm pretty fit for my size, but I'm 18 stone. And, uh, you know, and obviously over an eight hour day, you know, it can, you know, my body, you know, can feel the wear on it. it you know, I ain't got the best, best stamina. But <coughs> for anyone out there using a small trowel, especially, and I'm strong, I'm strong. I've got, you know, I've been training all my life. I can lift things, you know, it's not like I'm weak and I struggle to lift my trowel. Um... I just find I'm faster with a small trowel. I'm faster. I can keep up a higher hand speed for longer. I can lay at a quicker pace for longer. I'm less tired because I'm lifting up. I'm not overloading my hand every every trip to the board. I'm not overloading my hand with mortar, putting excess strain on my 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 hand, my wrist, my arm, my bicep, my shoulder. Lifting that trowel, everything that comes into play when you. When you're putting, you know, a thousand bricks in the wall a day, you're having to, you know, get at least seven, eight hundred trials full of mortar. You're having to pick seven or eight, nine hundred bricks up a day. Obviously, Dean is laying a few more bricks now. He's putting in, on, you know, on a on a good run, he's putting in, in at least a hundred bricks a day. So, <coughs> I'll try to give him some more credit when we're. Uh, when I next do a, a live brick count, he knows that, you know, I tell him every day he's doing good, but, you know, this is what you've got to, uh, you know, realise as well, that, you know, you, you've got to think about the overall fatigue. Brick laying is a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, and, the, and the small trowels can really, you know, uh, they can benefit you more than you'd think. People take piss out of them out of ego. I bought, I had a few old guys, there's a few old guys on this job who, who'd, who'd worked in Germany before and they went, Went straight up to me and went, bumming out some fucking pick and dip trowel. That's you know, mint asking me where I got it, etc. But they know the value and of of the uh, the seven inch trowels. But I'm going to be making an eight inch just so. Can you see me here rolling the mortar to get the optimal amount? See, that's just spread through about a brick and a half on a conny. Um, that on a perforated brick at the wrong consistency mortar probably wouldn't be enough. But the eight inch, the eight inch, that extra inch, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it a Philadelphia pattern also. Uh, that extra inch, or be able, you'll be able to just dip your, your uh, trowel into the mortar, and you don't have to roll the maximum amount to fill your trowel. So, uh, an eight inch is gonna be, I think, somewhat more optimal. Um, you know, I will experiment. I might switch between the seven and eight. Um, the trowel I'm going to be cutting down in question is a 10 inch Marshall town, the same lift as this tile setter. Um, it has a little bit more of a scoopy lift, <coughs> the Marshall town. And I found over my years doing pick and dip, I was using a Marshall town 10 inch for my first six, seven months doing pick and dip. And I found probably that slightly more effective, especially for the one at, one at a time method. And I do like the lift on the Marshall Town after using the Tyzak for a long time, using the W Rose with the flat lifts. You know, I'm not saying one's better than the other, I'm just saying I've started to prefer that Marshall Town lift. And the trials are cheap, you know. If you wanna if you fuck if you fuck a, you know, fuck your, your Marshall Town up, cutting it down, you can get another ten inch Marshall Town, you know, for like thirty odd quid. Uh Philadelphia without any issue. There was a big uh you know, there's a big concept uh, you know, bit of a popularization of the London pattern you know it doesn't matter you know I've used London I've laid more with this tile setting trowel than I've ever laid with a London pattern trowel and uh, obviously t today I broke my PB uh, of nine well I didn't technically I, you know I laid 
960 bricks today, but Dean laid some of them, so I didn't technically break my PB. My, break, my PB is 950, just me laying, and that was done with a 10-inch Marshalltown Philadelphia pattern. So, you can see the benefit straight away, um, and obviously, you know, each each type of work has its own upsides and downsides. Obviously, these that get these garages you've seen in this video are having to be pointed, whereas in the previous footage, I didn't have to point the back of that garage. Obviously, uh, you know, when I hit my, my 950 PV, which I'll still stand today, it still stands, I've still not broke it yet, technically. Um, that 950 was done on a boundary wall that didn't need pointing both sides. It was a 9-inch wall, so, you know, you know, the anecdote is there that, the, that this trial is fast. You've seen it, um, you know, it's more consistent. Uh, you be you know you're able to lay, you know, higher numbers, you know, more consecutive days. You know, you anyone can kill themselves for one day, and then the next day they're fucking absolutely, you know, they they lay like three hundred bricks as a knackered. With this with this tile set, you can consistently lay seven eight hundred bricks easily, because uh, my my old standard. Um, about you know before Dean started if I hit 600 bricks a day I've done well now my new standards probably at least seven uh, if not eight uh, I want to be in the eight seven and seven and eight hundreds every day and if I do more than that it's a bit of a bonus but um, that's the sort of standard I'm expecting and we send you know on a regular basis but you know if you're doing like table lifts and cuts like I was the the other day you, you know you might not even crack four or five hundred so you know, you've got to, um, you've just got to, you know, mod modulate your uh, your output when you can. And the the little trial can, you know, help you do that. So, um, <coughs> that's my, you know, my uh, opinion on the small trowels. Obviously, a lot of guys won't agree, but a lot of guys don't agree with pick and dip. But, you know, it gives you full joints, it's fast. And um, the, the biggest thing people don't want to admit, it's hard to do. When you first, when I first started pick and dip... I was laying the same amount of bricks pick and dip um, as I was traditional because I was so rubbish at it. And then slowly, week after week after week, I started laying a few more, a few more, a few more until, you know, I'm laying at least, you know, 50% more pick and dip than I can traditional. Um, obviously, there's, there's certain times, you know, you can lay just as quick traditional as pick and dip, but for ease of use, ease of working, you know, the pick and dip is superior. And it, you know it's easy. You know it's easy once you get once you, you get in, you get into a rhythm. So uh, as well, profiles. I'm gonna have a little touch on profiles again. I'm still using the aluminium box section. Um, I'm still using the um, you know the bit of brick band as a spacer um, for the pure reason of you know you could use a timber clamp. You could use metal stabilizers. They sell. But I'm trying to reduce, as I've always said in my previous videos from, you know, over a year ago now, that I like to, you know, use as, uh, you know, carry around as little amount of tools as possible. Obviously, I've upped my tool arsenal over the years. I've got to the point where, you know, I'm carrying around four profiles, six bins, uh, you know, a few spot boards if I haven't got the opportunity to cut any new ones with my circular saw. You know, two or three toolboxes with a circular saw and drills in. Um, but I'm still a you know I'm still a a big advocate of four pieces of box section, um, or even maybe six if you're uh, you know you're on a big house with some internals. But four or six pieces of box section with you know a lot of F clamps, hundred mil and and three hundred variant, uh, sorry one fifty and uh, three hundred variant of the F clamp, and you know just you know uh, away you go, you know easy. Uh, you know, an easy setup. You know, with the with this with the brick band spacers on your profiles, you don't need any stabilizers. Um, you know, and they are a versatile piece of kit. You want to keep hold of your aluminium profiles. The, you know, it's always worth it to buy Blake's. The aluminiums can be clamped on with, you know, one or two. You know, like. Min, you know, you can use a minimum of like one brick to clamp on the aluminiums. You know, with a with a block weight stabilizer, and um, you know that <coughs> they're definitely a prime piece of kit for using 
<coughs> on your block work if you're running in block work first I'm going to show a few different techniques for the for the aluminium profiles on block work and a few sort of uses I've got the fits brick video to do where I show so where I'm going to show some um, I'm going to do like a bit of a compilation of the ways I've used the fits brick on video so you guys can see and the fits bricks have applications with profiles um, you know there is definitely a lot of value in having aluminiums over something like uh, steel profiles steel profiles a little bit heavier like just a bit like the blakes or they have like the steel goal po goalpost variants but the aluminium box section is light you know and and i think it's just a superior more uh you know dynamic profile but um yeah i'm gonna be uh doing a series with more profile tips in the future uh so yeah thank you very much for watching hope you enjoyed this little voiceover and I'll see you uh, on Friday with the rest of the week's video. So thanks a lot and I will see you guys in the next one.